Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, my name is Professor Gaurav Dhar Homing. I am from the Agriculture and Food Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. Uh, welcome to the course Advanced Aquaculture Technology. Uh, today we will be discussing on the aqua algal systems uh, from the, for the module 3 of farming systems. So, the topic uh, that I will be covering are the application of uh, live food organisms, uh, larval nutrition, uh, selection criteria for live food sources, algal culture, parameters affecting the algal culture and the microalgae culture methods. So, in general uh, live food organisms uh, you know from the name itself you can understand the food which is like still in, li in, in, in living condition. Okay. So, in 1970s this marine fin fish and the stream aquaculture uh, fry were exclusively, exclusively captured from the wild and then this when complete domestication of marine and uh, brackish water started this hatchery production of fry became a very common practice. This larvae culture techniques, it is it's in general it varies from the conventional nursery and the grow out ponds, but and the techniques that is normally used is the husbandry uh, in husbandry uh, like animal husbandry feed uh, strategies and the microbial controls and all. So, in general the, uh, the larva that uh, are like they have some specific you know uh, criteria or I would say like the specifications, it is very small and extremely fragile in nature, they are not uh, physiologically fully developed they have a very small mouth size and the underdeveloped perception organs and the digest, digestive systems. Therefore, the food that we want to supply to this larva has to be has to have the you know certain qualities which will be good enough for them to consume it and so to grow like make them grow to the further stage of development. So, larval nutrition uh, if I talk about this full commercialization of the farm fish and the cell fish it depends on the ample availability of the healthy fry. And uh, this uh, larvae culture depends on the proper feeding of this sensitive larvas and all. So, thus larval nutrition is very important, it is one of the crucial step. So, what are the uh, you know how this fish larva like like how this fish larva say this most of the fish larvas they rely how much they rely on the food source and what are the criteria based on which they uh, we choose the food source for this larva and all. Okay. So, definitely uh, it has to be at least partially or easily digestible all the food that I'm tar we are targeting. It should contain the enzyme system, it could, should contain the enzyme systems that allow the autolysis inside the fish uh, digestive systems. It, sub it should supply the all essential nutrients required by the larval predators. Okay? So, these are the three very uh, essential thing is that is that has to be there uh, for them to consume. And however, the formulated feed normally what we do in uh, for other uh, like you know you know when adult adult fishes and adult aquatic species, they are not they cannot meet the requirement because uh, be this they cannot meet these requirements in general for the larva species for the specifically when they are in larval stage, which results in a very poor growth and the survival of, uh, of small fish larva. That is why like people start as uh, thinking about the live food organisms. This live food organisms they normally they move, so because of that the larva can easily detect it because they have a very poor detection uh, mechanism in their body because they are in a very early, early stage of development right. So, this live food organism they, they as because they are moving they are keep on moving because of that uh, they can easily identify this larva uh, they can easily identify and they can detect it and they can have it uh, properly. This continuous movement is also available throughout the water column which also like which is, which is like uh, in general like it, it, it is the one of the major criteria for the larva species to uh, have it like in the like their food to have this kind of uh, behavior. 
So selection criteria for the live food sources in general, the culture point of view, definitely it should be available, it should have a cost effective, in, it should be cost effective in nature. The more simple the production, the more easier it is, the versatility, the uses of, uh, the use, using versatility, like you know, the uses versatility of this particular um, live food organisms for different kind of fishes or different other type of, the different type of larvas for different type of fishes. So, in larval point of view, uh, the, it has to be in physical terms, it has to be pure, it has to be acceptable to the larva, it has to be available to the larval species. Nutritional point of view, it has to be easily digestible, it should have a less energy requirement, it should have a less energy requirement for the production of the same, however, it should provide the ample amount of uh, nutrient to the, uh, our, to our target larval species and all. Okay. So, in general, uh, live food organisms uh, based on, you know, the, the predator species, it can vary like say microalgae. Microalgae is very famous live food organisms for bivalves, pinear streams, fishes, etc., etc., okay, right. So, for them, microalgae is a very uh, standard, uh, like fishes means like mainly the herbivorous fishes. So, for them, this uh, microalgae are the major live food sources which they consume and they, uh, and for their larval source also. For the larva also, it is a very major sources of nutrient uh, for major nutrient. Then there comes this rotifers, rotifers are the ones which is like a microscopic or semi microscopic one. Uh, uh, there is another term for rotifers, we call them wheel animal, wheel, uh, you know wheel animal also is another term for this rotifer. So, rotifers are a very famous uh, live food uh, for the different kind of crustaceans, uh, marine fishes, etc. Artem, Artemia is, uh, is another, uh, uh, you know, a type of live food, uh, which also named, uh, there is, an, there, we also call them brine streams, which Artemia is a very small, it is actually, we call it brine streams, actually it is also kind of crustaceans family also, it is it's called brine streams. So, this brine streams are very much, uh, you know, famous, it is very much useful. Uh, for uh, the predator species, like for the streams, for uh, the, the other fishes, and all. so for the for those lar for them, for the when they are in larval stage, it's a very famous, it's a very uh, sort of food for them, and it is being considered in recent days that this kind of live food organisms are very much beneficial for higher growth of uh, your target species and faster growth of your larval species, larval stage as, uh, as to be specific. Uh, then there comes the algal culture. Um, in general, the its algae is you know like it's one of the key components for the marine environment. It contributes significantly to the global primary production while also playing primary production means is the primary food production. That that's what I mean. And while also playing an important role in you know uptake or uptaking of dissolved nutrients from the surrounding environment. And because of that, what will happen? The pollutant load goes down. Okay coastal defense from the hazardous wave. So, we can have this uh, sea grasses and all this sea grasses and how they save the coast, uh, coastal regions, coastal mass. When the sea comes, when the sea wave comes, so it will dissipate the energy of the wave and because of that, the, it has a lower impact in the land masses and so that is why it can, it can, it acts as a you know, defense system for the coastal regions. Other than that, it, it causes the carbon sequestration as I already mentioned that it consumes a huge amount of carbon dioxide and they um, and it, it also uh, uh, gives back the car oxygen. So, it is like a, it is acting as a carbon, carbon dioxide, carbon sequestration, it is a major carbon dioxide sequestration technique uh, which is, in, which we can naturally uh, available and which we can produce artificially also, we can, I mean like which we can. Uh, kind of uh, uh, utilize this process artificially as well by uh, human intervention which by providing a huge amount of a lot of uh, seaweed, a lot of seagrass, a lot of mangrove production and all. So, these are it. So, microalgae, microalgae in general the phytoplanktons which form the basis of uh, marine and aquatic food chain, we call them microalgae. So, they are in microscopic in nature in general. So, that is why we call them microalgae, primary source of omega 3 fatty acids and it is uh, considered and like this microalgae, this is the, the difference is like in case of macroalgae, they are visible in like in general obviously from the name itself we can understand it is it is visible in the naked eye. So, majorly the seaweeds are, seaweeds are considered under this category. So, it has a critical habitat structuring species in the coastal ecosystems which actually 
does this major uh, this uh, major uh, job of coastal defense uh, in from the hazardous waves and all and it will dissipate the wave energy the parameters which can affect the algal culture is the nutrient quantity and the quality turbulence the salinity light uh, the ph the temperature so these are the one these are the different you know uh, regulating parameters which uh, can affects the algal growth definitely depending upon the culture species what type of algae it is and where they normally dwell and like what based on their uh, dwelling nature based on their uh, choose of habitat and uh, this 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 particular parameters has to be maintained when we try to grow it uh, artificially we try to grow it uh, by human intervention Several uh, microalgae species are grown commercially for the following uses. It can give us a high value uh, chemicals like carotenoids, fatty acid, nutraceuticals, uh, uh, cosmeceuticals, uh, animal feeds, etc. for the personal care products and all like this cosmeceuticals and all this animal feed is for the husbandries and all we can utilize it. Wastewater treatment definitely as I mentioned it can consume a huge amount of nutrient from the wastewater because of that the pollutant load goes down. It can use as a soil conditioner for agriculture and believe me this is one of the major uh, requirement this is one of the major um, how to say the, the it's, it's, it's nowadays people are using all over the world this seaweed extract for agriculture for royal rep, for soil uh, replenishment uh, and all so it can uh, we can utilize this uh, seawater extract sea uh, sorry the seaweed extracts for agriculture purpose potential use of the bioactive compounds like antibiotics anti cancer drugs etc etc is also possible from this seaweeds in general the uh, microalgae they are the you know phytoplankton uh, formed uh, from the base of uh, which is like from the base of the food chain in mariculture uh, the microalgae it's actually in general it's indispensable and as it is a food source for all the growth stages so we have to have this microalgae in the system for the bivalve molars, for the larval stages of some crustacean species, for very early growth stage of some fish species as well, okay, and obviously for the herbivores and uh, fishes and as well. In general, how it works? This food chain, algae, then zooplankton like rotifers, uh, this uh, copy pods or the brine streams or this brine streams or this artemia, then this larval or early juvenile stages of the crustaceans and fish. So that's how it works. In general, the algae which grown in the larval tank. It stabilize should have you know uh, provide the nutrition to the larva it helps in microbial control it stabilizes the water quality as well so the commercial scale uh, microalgae uh, culture methods in general we have same as like we discussed you know extensive aquaculture uh, extensive uh, intensive and the semi intensive or uh, in intensive ones it's like the same way in case of commercial stage uh, microalgae culture systems also varies like these three methods First is extensive. Okay, in extensive culture methods, very uh, we do not actually they, they have a very uh, very minimal uh, human intervention. Okay, in general, they almost no intervention at all. Okay, in case of extensive microalgae culture system, they are, can be done in extensive very large uh, area like almost can up to uh, can go up can goes up can go up to 250 hectare. Okay. So, like multiply with 10 to the 4, you can easily identify the amount of size in square meter. So, then uh, you supply it with in, in a very low cell density of around 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 gram per liter of dry weight. Ponds are shallow with a depth of 30 to uh, 50 centimeter and the species cultures mainly like not mainly this is one of the example of this you know Donal, uh, Donaliella uh, salina. So, this is one of the example of uh, the species that can be cultured it is actually a kind of um, um, a microalgae that can survive in the extreme environment as well this uh, uh, this uh, D salina. So, uh, they, they, they can be utilized for the production of beta carotenoids and all okay and it can it can grow in a very high salinity 25 to 35 percent 30 percent is weight by volume of nit uh, uh, sodium chloride and the high temperature up to 30 to 40 degrees Celsius also it can easily grow. So, this can do this kind of species. So, only control operator ha have uh, this system is like the salinity okay which can be controlled by adding sea water if you see that the, the salinity of this farm is going down you can simply open the sluice gate and whenever the high tides 
uh, flow condition is maintained, the, the canal should be designed, canal should be uh, developed and through this canal system and through this sluice gate, you can easily control the flow of seawater, influence of the sluice water or inflow of seawater in your farm. Nutrient con concentration is adjusted by depending on the requirement of the microalgae, you can supply it additionally uh, the nutrients, nutrients to the system. Then there comes the semi-intensive culture. So, we already know what is semi-intensive culture. It means there needs some human intervention, right. So, it has a less, it requires, it, it requires like um, in general it requires a less land area compared to the extensive aquaculture, extensive uh, this uh, algae culture. Better mixing of culture can be done which can improve the control of the culture condition. See in this particular case, if you see this is a particular race where type design where you see this harvest uh, har where the place where we can provide the feed uh, 0.2 meter per second of flow is maintained. The pond depth or the tank depth is around 0 0.03 meter uh, with uh, you can see that uh, the, the size the width to uh, length ratio is given 1 to 10 like you know if it is like 1 uh, say like 10 meter is the length of the 10th meter is the width of the tank. So, 100 meter should be the length of the tank. So, that is how it is to be designed. Okay. Better mixing of cultures, it improves the quality control of culture conditions, uh, higher cell densities up to 1 gram per liter of dry weight can it is po it is possible in this kind of case. The raceway ponds are the main culture systems with a productivity of up to 30 gram per square meter per day of uh, dry weight. Okay. So, uh, in general, so th this is the dry weight, this 30 gram is the dry weight that I am talking about. Okay. So, pond size can go up to 1 hectare with 30 centimeter of uh, depth. So, that pond depth it should be it is a wrong actually it should not be 0 0.03 it should be uh, 0.3 meter. Okay. So, just remind this thing this is not the 0 0.3 0 0.0 this is 0 0.3 meter it is like 30 centimeter not uh, the 3 centimeter. Okay. Uh, the factors are to be considered while designing the optimally sized ponds the optimal pond depth around like for considering the pond light penetration it has to be 20 to 30 centimeter. The mixing velocity minimum flow rate has to be 10 centimeter per second and optimal is like but better to go ahead with the 30 centimeter per second. Uh, the cell density must be controlled to minimize the self shedding, shedding of uh, by the cell. What does that mean? If you have you know very high uh, algal bloom in your system in your like you know, in your culture, what will happen because of this algal bloom? So, it will give a shedding effect to the uh, species that is dwelling in the bottom or the mid and the column region. So, for them they will not be supplied with the enough amount of sunlight. So, proper mixing density has to be mixing uh, velocity has to be mentioned maintained and also cell density has to be controlled based on that manner it, it cannot go uh, very you cannot go ahead with the very in intensive um, production. Okay. So, this is how a semi intensive uh, culture look like and how uh, in general when we go for uh, culturing for a very huge amount in a like you know when we have a we do not have any land issues like we can procure land and or we can lease it or we can say like uh, rent it and land and we can have our culture of uh, microalgae. So, we can go ahead with this kind of systems. Last but not the least is the intensive culture. From the name itself you understood like we are provide we normally provide in case of intensive culture a very well uh, optimal situations optimal conditions from each sense like you know based on the light based on the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that you are supplying I mean and based on the nutrient that is available in the system. So, everything has to be optimal and be because of that because of this optimal uh, environmental conditions or the environmental consideration like of the, the, situ the, the, the parameters that you are providing to the system, it can grow very intensively, it can grow the, the amount of algae that is present there can grow very at a very high rate and the production rate is this kind of systems are actually nowadays used for. Uh, the biofuel production and all. Okay, so we simply use li extract the lipid and then we use it for you know uh, the biofuel production and all. So that is a very uh, standard methods of the um, recent days uh, studies uh, based um, where people are working on this green fuels and all. So they go for this uh, intensive culture of microalgae and all. Okay. 
uh, it can be grown under highly controlled optimum conditions that as I already told and in closed photobioreactor. This kind of systems are called photobioreactor where because of the, 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 the artificial um, light that you are providing that is why we call it photobioreactor. So, obviously, it is a bioreactor where we will be culturing some biological uh, living organisms and all. Okay. It can have a high cell density uh, up to 10 gram per liter of uh, 10 gram per liter in, in uh, on the basis of dry weight can go. So, which is like very high. Okay. So, the culture systems this kind of culture systems can be of different types big bag systems, tubular photobioreactor, flat panel, heterotropic cultures and all. So, big bag system is look like this you see the culture uh, if you see the picture figure there. So, the culture medium through the nutrient dose pump it comes to the uh, this big bags or this uh, particular uh, transparent uh, uh, plastic bags or like it can be made of other materials as well. So, where the light sources because of the light sources it, it penetrates uh, till uh, uh, on like you know uh, inside the system and you can grow the easily you can grow the uh, algae, algae there and uh, at the end if you at the end you know when it goes uh, when it starts settled you can easily take it out from the this bottom wall part of the exit systems the bio microbial biomass exit system. So, that is how it works in case of big bag systems. And these are some of the very, uh, you know, how to say, advanced techniques. Okay, so these are the techniques which uh, nowadays people are using all over the world. Like you know, like it's not r limited to this only this three type of structure. It can be any structure based on a proper scientific design. See the first one. If you see this helical tubes, those tubes are nothing but they are utilized for the culture of algae. There are algae growing there inside these glass tubes. Okay. So, if you see the this is highly optimal situation is provided there because of that there is a huge amount of uh, there is a the rate of production of algae is very high in this kind of system. If you see the tanks through the pump the flow is provided flow of nutrient media algae is uh, you know uh, grown in the in this helical tubes. And so, this is how it works. So, if the next time this multitubular airlift photobioreactor if you see. So, the, the in the probes and through the most mixed gas is come uh, goes inside from the bottom and the gas which is coming out of the system. So, this actually provides the carbon dioxide or the ample amount of the you know for them to grow normally we mix it with other gases also or it is better to go ahead with the flue gases and all. It can treat the car, it can treat those flue gushes from the industrial region. Nowadays, these are used, this kind of photobioreactors, multi tubular uh, airlift photobioreactors are even used in industries for carbon dioxide sequestration. So, they are having this multiple layer of uh, stacks of uh, photobioreactors, and there it is like in you know, a fridge like structure. We have this fridge or uh, incubator like structures where we have uh, this multiple sheets of uh, these photobioreactors. And uh, the flue gases, industrial flue gases, were, which carbon dioxide rich or the greenhouse rich gases, are actually supplied through it. So, because of this supply of this carbon dioxide rich uh, gases, they consume the carbon dioxide, they even uh, they utilize it and for the growing of the biomass, they convert it to the biomass. And by this way, we can get rid of the global um, gas, uh, greenhouse gases like uh, carbon dioxide and all. So, that is actually a very standard practice, not a standard practice, it is a very cutting edge technology. Um, people are using it i know couple of uh, uh, startups all over the world like they are working on it and they it will be the it is actually the future it is actually i'm telling you this technologies that i'm discussing are the future of um, human civilizations people will be using it a lot uh, in their daily purposes in different places and not only that this algal biomass that you are actually we are actually harvesting from out of this reactors can be utilized for the production of the uh, this uh, different biofuels and all. Okay. This biofuels or the biodiesels are a very clean clean uh, energy source. Okay. These are actually been used even to run a car nowadays. Okay. So, in Germany people in Germany uh, this technology are now practiced in different places especially in Munich and uh, Berlin. So, they are working on it. So, where they have utilized this kind of technologies for even running a small uh, automated small vehicles and also 
in future there is a high chances in this there will be in near future will be use, u, utilizing this uh, different type of biofuels for the uh, you know for our transportation purposes and all ok. So, this other than that there is another type of flat panel photo photobioreactor you can see there is like air inlet and the water inlet and actually that is the medium inlet and I mean like the nutrition this uh, nutrient media that we normally supply there and it in this to you know this uh, to parallel units uh, in between them maybe we put we can put the light or in you know it is like a sandwich like structure we can put the LED light we can provide LED panel we can provide this LED panels have we can optimize it in such a way there is a chance the exact photo uh, exact luminescence or exact um, you know the wavelength of light that is required for the chlorophyll for that can be utilized by the chlorophyll of those uh, chlorophylls of um, uh, those um, uh, like the, 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 I mean like the microalgae they can utilize it and because of the exact amount of uh, luminescence that we are providing exact amount of uh, wavelength of uh, like you know light that we are providing they can utilize it in optimal way and they can they can convert it to the biomass in a very speedy manner. So, that is how the scientists are working on nowadays in different uh, sector and th in this kind of sectors how they are utilizing it and these are the advanced technology that I was always discussing you. Um, in this lecture series and maybe I will discuss more uh, in the in the later uh, lectures as well like how this advanced technologies are changing the world and the human uh, the future of human civilizations. So, in conclusion this microalgae it play uh, actually a major critical role in the larval uh, nutrition of uh, important marine aquaculture species. It is also uh, this algae culture, this algal culture is done in a very small scale, but it has a tremendous potential uh, to grow high value chemicals and compounds for various benefits. And in near future it can simply uh, you know um, uh, be the one of the one of the fastest growing uh, sector in, um, in, the, in, the, in the in terms of this aquaculture practice. I am telling you this macroalgae, macroalgae is having this both have a very high impact on the human civilizations and people will be working on this more and more often than now. Because this seaweeds I told you this seaweeds and all this has a huge impact it has a lot of byproducts that we can recover out of it, but we are not utilizing it at, at its full stage forget about the full fledged like not even like uh, percentage a very small fraction of it is utilized in all over the world. There is a po enormous possibility of utilizing the seaweeds. Second thing is this microalgae, microalgae has an enormous amount of benefits. So, this microalgae is like you know it is like a liquid gold ok. So, if you can use it properly if you can product if you can produce it in a very optimum condition. Uh, if you sustainably uh, produce it and scientifically uh, form it there is a high chance you will get a very high amount of uh, economic return out of it and which you can utilize uh, for uh, your economic benefit and also for uh, the purpose of you know uh, the development of your uh, country's GDP. So, the takeaway messages uh, from this lecture is the culture of algae is definitely improves uh, the primary production as well as the various benefits of the marine ecosystem. Uh, this microalgae forms the basis of the food chain for all the marine and aquatic organisms and this, uh, this microalgae or macroalgae or the seaweeds are highly beneficial uh, to the habitat and to the system in a general in a, in a, in a whole. These are the references that uh, I have uh, taken the information from. So, you may consider this references to uh, uh, you can pause the video and you can see this refer look into this references for you know to have more uh, idea more information about the discussions that we just had ok. Uh, thank you so much uh, let us uh, meet for uh, wait for the next lecture.